word. No. Did you know that for, I think it was, they said in the Americas for about 2000 years, they were creating pottery, right? There's all sorts of pottery through North America and South America, what's now known as Central America. For 2000 years before there was any sign of people using wheels to as a carriage, as a mode of transport, as a wheel on the, uh, the river. So what I'm saying is, um, this is like an Elon Musk thing. The future is here. The wheel was all always there. They just had it spinning the wrong direction and they just flipped it upright basically 2000 years later. So that's the Elon Musk, like the future is here. I think the squat is very similar, right? Where the squat is doing something. We all have seen a squat. If you've ever seen a person sit down or stand up, you've seen a squat. Um, but I think there's a little more within the squat that we could, we could learn. Does that make sense? There, or that could be helpful for us. And so I want to explore, I want to explore today, this is an NPR episode. I want to explore today the nuances. What is the wheel that's going vertically that we need to turn horizontally? Like how can we just turn over this? I think there's a, a rock, there's an Emerson quote, a Labrador spar, it's like this dark rock. And if you turn it over, you'll catch a little glimpse of it. And it's like brilliantly like purple and beautiful and deep. But if you're not looking at it otherwise, it just looks like a chunk of coal. But you do have to turn it over and you do have to kind of scrub a little bit. What do you think are those little hidden gems in a squat that most people don't see? Before we get into that, welcome to the Anatomy of Therapy. I'm Dr. John Sobolski here with Bobby Riley in Volcanic Island. That thing is going off for a minute, huh? Um, but we're going to get into the squat today. Y'all have heard me talk too much about the squat on this channel, uh, but let's figure out what, what do you think that is? What's the, what's the hidden gem in a squat that people don't see? Well, you messaged me in a vague way about Netflix. So maybe you can, and I was a little it? confused. So maybe okay. you can lay that out because I think it's connected to the question, but yeah. before I answer you, you asked me in a different way. So what I was just that? wanted to drop that historical fact so that people knew that I had that no, historical I, wisdom. I really liked it. Yeah, it's not bad, right? Okay, so, yeah. so to bring it to a more modern example today, we, <laughs> we if the most modern. Fast forward to now, we binge TV shows, right? So, which is amazing. You can binge uh, lectures and stuff. You can instead of going to Oxford or MIT, there's open source MIT classes now that you can binge Netflix. You can uh, of MIT. What would take you a four years to get a degree? You can do it yourself. It takes a little bit of work, but you have access to that. It's an amazing feature of our society. However, the lower level of that is watching, say, something like Breaking Bad, right? And you can binge watch all three seasons of Breaking Bad from start to finish. Um, and I think I think of squats, well, I was, the analogy was that squats is like Breaking Bad. Squats is a great TV series from start to finish. But I think a lot of people just watch like the first episode or two, and then they watch the finale and then they've heard some stuff in the middle about the, the show, about the squat, right? But they don't really, they haven't watched the whole thing. Um, what do you think are the episodes people are missing? Yeah, okay. It, so uh, you have ancient pottery making yeah, in the wheel right. and Netflix miniseries. The gas this, is, this is how John's brain works. Like, let's talk about squatting. Let me talk about pottery and Netflix series. And I don't think laterally. What do you man. think about that, Bobby? <laughs> what do you think um, people miss in the squat? What do you think is valuable in the squat that people miss? Right. There we go. Succinct. But I mean, I do like these. I like these. Uh, yeah. Ra alternative called, ways I think of they're called rabbit yeah. trails to nowhere. <laughs> yeah. So the, the Netflix one. Uh, I think it's going to be easier. So we, okay. we think of Netflix as like a series of shows or episodes, but, but it's topical. So every, yeah. you know, so, you know, when you watch Anthony Bourdain, it's like now he's in Vietnam and he's, have, he's eating banh mi and the next time he's in Indonesia and he's, he's trying the best Nazi goring. Okay. Like every episode's a little bit different. And, oh, and, and with the squat, <laughs> I'm hungry it's, now. Sorry. It's good. Yeah. Well, and, good. uh, but, but every episode of the squad could be, okay. You have, 
you have power lifting is one and then right. you have uh, defecating is another one and sure. there's just a yeah there's how many ep- there's a lot of episodes Talk probably about me for the squat. changing lanes bro you went from power lifting to the toilet <laughs> this is the same but lane. It's, it's fair that's true power that's lifters true. use the toilet okay. oh well done well done sir well done <laughs> yeah. damn it and uh but i'm trying to link this uh pottery wheel idea like i feel like um I feel I, I'm trying to think of the analogy where I, where I can use that wheel idea, like where they, it's like they already, I think that is the analogy itself, which would be, they already had a wheel of sorts. Right. Functionally, but it couldn't like surmise that we could just change the wheel slightly and use so, it for a whole bunch of fundamental things. Right. 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 So I, I feel like they're using, they're using something that is universal universally applicable in like a million different ways right like a rolling round object that can accomplish a task right there but they only see one angle of it and i feel like that is now i feel like Mm. people hear the word squat 99 percent of everybody's going to think of the exercise squat sure right like in in the clinic i ask people i mean i i think icelanders are are typically a higher percentage of, of exercisers for per population like so usually when i ask them over there though so there's 350,000 but yes <laughs> we have the most per capita of everything in the world right you, you really and, do uh, yeah soccer and, team uh, yeah yeah it and, is an uh, awesome nation i don't mean to bang on it it's an awesome nation no, 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 yeah, yeah. it really is sorry go ahead. so but highest I, per I, capita I, of exercisers yes yeah, so like when i'm with a patient and i say can you show me a squat mm-hmm. they all like set up like they're about to competitively lift Right. So like, I'm like, okay, you're obviously a CrossFitter, a powerlifter, strongman, right. uh, boot camp, something like, yeah. Cause they're like, let me, uh, uh, do I, can I change my shoes quick? Uh, you know, they it's brought like, their powerlifting shoes. I'm like, yeah. no, no, no. Like just like, uh, genuflect. Can you just like uh-huh. bend your knees towards the floor? Like now we're getting Easter. I love it. Like I, I'm not yeah. asking, I'm like, I'm not looking for your squat technique yeah. here. Like, can you just do a human squat? So sure. And I do think that's what I mean by the using the wheel in only one dimension is like, we think of squat as an exercise and we go and we train this exercise, which it's like, it's flipped upside down. It's like the wrong way to think about it, which Mm -hmm. is you're like training a movement that you don't actually even have most likely like to an expert degree without weight. Uh, And then we, we just train it as a sport for load. Right. Right. they come to us and complain that the, the lateral knee hurts or pinching in the front of the ankle or both right. hips hurt or they've got a disc herniation or they have, you know what I mean? Every time they train, they get headaches. Like yeah. it's just like a million scenarios. It's because they're actually training in, in an exercise way, a movement that they are actually not capable of doing right. without load. And then yeah. I mean, how many patients do you know that need load to properly squat as well? That's it. So let me, that's a great second point. Let's start with the first one. I love, I love the direction this is going. So like um, what you're saying is people are squatting and they're adding load to it, but they can't even squat well without load. And there is a counterpoint in a second. That's that putting a little bit load on of load on you will help you with your squat. And there's a great argument for that. But the first one is look, if you don't have, I think the common language for today is the prerequisites in other words, each joint doesn't have the ability the ability to consistently and in unison, in concert, get into the squat position, then um, you shouldn't put load on it. It's like le- allowing a 16-year-old to go dr- drive a Lamborghini V12, you know, like he, he can't handle a, a four-cylinder, right? Don't give him the Lamborghini. Bad stuff might happen. He might not know how to operate that system. And uh, he could get some tickets and run into some trouble. Is that a fair picture of what we were saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I would say, like you know, to your earlier question, which is what are, what are we missing, you know, and what 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 are we missing in this Netflix series? Is just yeah, you know, what 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 it actually is occurring for you to to squat correctly, and then the difference between just anatomical or human squatting and competitive squatting like right i understand i mean if you are in the top 50 in the world in in, in the squat like right. for for weight well i you know honestly it doesn't really matter how great any of your joints are because i mean it does for performance but as far as like 
from my perspective as a, as a clinician, like right, right, right. you're in the top 20 in the world. Like it, it's irrelevant if you can without weight squat, because you are doing a sport and you are very, very, very good at it. Right. And most sports are not conducive to health at the highest level, like yeah, almost, almost none of them. Yeah. I can't really even think of one no. <laughs> that would be beneficial to do at the highest level. I'm, uh, yeah. Right. Concussion. So, yeah, for sure. Right. So what's missed, you know, what's missing from this Netflix series is, is understanding that, that, you know, for one squat is just a movement that we need and that there's a difference between competitive lifting and, and non-competitive lifting. And there's right. a difference between the world-class athlete and the casual CrossFitter because the world-class athlete, it is maybe worth it to them to, to, to replace both of their hips at 45 right? with, with a couple world titles. Like, sure. honestly, like I, I, I think I'm, I would clap for that person. Like they, they sacrifice something. They probably, I think a lot of the people that do strongman at the highest level know that they can die very, you know, much earlier, but like, for sure. they all know that. Yeah. And, and that's okay. That's the risk they're willing to take. It's, yeah. No problem. But this, this mixed, I think the real, the saddest person is the person in the middle, the person, not the Asian who's been squatting for their whole life beautifully to, 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 to plant and, and, and harvest rice, right. but the, the, uh, the, the casual CrossFitter that really is trying to set personal PRs and beat the person next to him yeah. that is constantly tearing a meniscus and tearing a labrum and, and then, you know, is out of CrossFit for four months and then comes back and then gets destroyed again and then gets burnt out and then just right. says Stops. my body's screwed i can't do crossfit anymore and then yeah. it's just bob's burgers and 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 you know swedish fish for the rest of their life and they and they, and they complete they're the ones that see you cantankerous as hell in their in your office at right. 65 talking about how everybody's rap music is too loud and 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 their damn hip hurts so much that they can't right. sleep and you know they don't they just look like they can't enjoy anything like i, I that's sure. the saddest person. That's the episode that I don't like. For sure. You know? That's a yeah. that's a rough episode. But no, I like I do think there are there are shades of that person, obviously, like even not, let's say not the CrossFitter, let's say the just the young man going into his local gym, uh, working out, you know, the Gold's Fitness, the Anytime Fitness, whatever's kind of in your neck. I don't know what they have in Iceland. But whatever's in your neck of the woods, he goes on YouTube, he finds some guy who tells him how to squat. Uh, then he finds another guy who has is part of a different camp on YouTube, and that guy tells him how to squat. And then he takes just, you know, a five-minute clip here. He heard a podcast over there, and then he goes to the gym, and he's, he, he loads himself up on the Smith machine because he's like, okay, it's a little safer to squat on the Smith machine. And then he comes, and he's like, I do not know why my back hurts. I have no idea. I actually feel good. He probably, this is the guy who probably feels good when he works out. He's like working out is nice. Cause he probably, let's just say mid twenties, men or women. And they're Icelanders are probably like this. They have a generally good gym over there. They generally work out, but they've just got this. They've just got a little episode here, a little episode there. And they, they feel good when they work out. But then later they're like, I don't know why my back hurts, but I do know that I squatted a bunch recently. Like, where does where do we go from that like what does this person if we could give a more general like let's go back to your prerequisites uh, maybe that's a better place to start like if you're gonna go squat and you found some impedance some uh restriction in your progress of that squat what would you want them to do well it's tricky i mean I think it's tough when, if you don't have much knowledge or you don't have people around you that can yeah. give you the information, I guess, you know, these days it's the best you can, you know, 30 years ago, you just had to meet some, you know, somebody in the iron, right. you know, <laughs> iron business iron. that could uh, show you what's going on in the gym. That's sure. just, it was just passed down that way. Right. But now, now, you know, we can just watch Instagram and claim to understand these things. Instagram but, is like clips of the show from different episodes from different series. That's that's one of the faults of Instagram. I think there's a lot of great stuff. It's all the best of, by the way, hmm. on Instagram. You just don't see why they got there, how they got there. You know, unless you're w willing to right. read all. Anyways, maybe a different point. Yeah, I'm yeah. constantly telling, like especially my my uh, 
athletic population uh, in my office. I'm like, yeah. just in Olympic lifting, we have Russians and uh, the Russian system and the Bulgarian system. And I, yeah. I tell them like, you want to be, you want to do the Russian system. Yeah. You know, the, the Russians, it's like 90% of all the reps that they do in an annual year is between 65 and 85%. Yeah. And when they were younger, it was even a higher percentage in, right. as far as the amount of reps and, and lower or even weights. And you just, it's just training and training and training and slowly and, and like moving well and doing everything perfect for like decades, yeah. right? Now this is, it's a bit of an extreme. And then I say, well, the Bulgarian method oh. is just like the weed you out method. We're just going to go to almost hundred percent maximums, uh, one or once or twice a day, six days a week. Yeah. And if you break, you're out. And if you don't break, you, you might be a medalist in the Olympics. You're a genetic and, and they, freak. Yeah. And they bring, they, they get some gold medals. They've had yeah. some of the best lifters. Huh. But those guys a lot of times end up broken, uh, the ones you never hear of, you know. Right. Uh, so I say, you know, be like the, do the Russian system. The Russian yeah. system is where, you know, we have to learn to do these things well. But I think with, Inst like, speaking of Instagram, it's not so glamorous to, you know, do the, like we were talking about the Edo Portal, sit in a squat for, you know, once, one minute, 30 times a day. Those time lapses are boring. Or, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you or, know? It's not a very fun post. No. Uh, but maxing out is, uh, it, is right. good. But, but yeah, I mean, that's the, the real thing, we, we all know this. I mean, everybody listening to this knows that we, we need pre you know, whether they've been to an FRC course or not, no, they know that we need the, the prerequisites to, to do something like a squat. Right. And, uh, but I, I think, you know, when you brought up just very vaguely about what we talk about today, my mind was drifting towards just the total connection to what being able to squat means for a person huh. and like what it means when you can't. So I, I yeah. I'm not so impressed honestly, if you can squat 200 kilos or 440 right. pounds, right. I, I think I'm a lot more impressed if you can just sit deeply in a squat and read a book for 20 minutes. I'd be like, I'm like damn, that's, a, that's unbelievable, actually, yeah. you know, and Reading I think for 20 minutes straight, <laughs> both yeah. facts these days are, <laughs> yeah, yeah. are impressive feats. I'll tell you that destroys a, a this person, pound squat. That's Elon. That's the Elon Musk's child, the, the dictator of our future. Like <laughs> he's reading, he's just down there reading Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> Anyways, well, I mean, but yeah. Like when I was in Hong Kong a, a couple of years ago, I, I just sat and like, I think I was, yeah, I was probably uh, uh, embarking on a few libations, but I was sitting wow. on like a stoop, just watching this, this, uh, lady, this, I mean, she had to be at least 80. Yeah. Uh, she looked like she was 230 years old. So she was just sat in a deep squat selling newspapers for as long as I watched her. She never came out of the squat. She reached for a paper. She handed yeah. it, she sold it. She got her coins and like, that was it. Yeah. And I just sat there like, drinking some cuvee or whatever, you know, cool thing I thought was cool at the time. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I was just blown away that she could do that. And I'm, and I'm yeah, somebody who's sure. been in sports my whole life and I'm yeah. a clinician and I do work on the squad a little bit and there's no chance that I could do that. And I think yeah. she was in sandals and I, I think her it. knee was like four fists in front of her toes and she just sat there, you know, yeah. uh, perineum a couple centimeters from the floor. No problem working for yeah i think i watched her for 30 minutes and she never needed to move and i bet when yeah. she stands up she didn't look decrepit and broken like like she had to walk it off she yeah. just probably got up and walked grabbed her stuff and left yeah. and i mean that's that's the thing you know i i before we went on here i wanted to see if i could find some comparison of uh like uh arthroscopic or or just re knee replacement hip replacements from the west to the east yeah and i could only find that of course the west spends way more money but i couldn't find a comparison of Shocking. actual yeah you know, arthroplasty or anything but uh i would bet but, i mean uh, yeah it's gotta be just bet. unbelievable I mean, for one you know they're just the systems are different they probably don't do as many right. the medical systems are different but even just if you could somehow standardize that study yeah there's no way that the, that the rural vietnamese are having the same hip pathologies as no way uh, the swiss banker no, for sure. But and so one of the other things that came up to mind when you when we were talking about that is, uh, you know, blood flow restriction, that yeah. kind of weird training where they do they, you know, they put a blood pressure cuff on you, and then you do a bunch of like curls or quad sets or whatever. If you're on the bottom of the squat, you are compressing a lot of your blood flow. 
However, if you can compress your blood flow, and this is, I mean, that's all working out to some degree, you're compressing blood flow if you're flexing your bicep back and forth. Some are just on a smaller, larger scale. But if she's sitting down there and compressing her blood flow down from her ankles, her knee, if her hamstrings flush to her calf, you know what I mean? I imagine part of her belly is on the front of her thigh. You know what I mean? Her, she's got a lot of compression in her lower body and yet she can still pump blood. So like, although it looks like a passive kind of situation, I think um, there's a lot actually going on where, I mean, it's, it, she's not passively resting on all her end joints. She kind of is, but she's still supporting herself. Um, so like that, that is a, an incredible baseline, uh, yeah. the foundation, you know, the, the height, what's that stupid, there's another Emerson one, the height of the peak is equal to the distance of the base. Right. So, I mean, her baseline is strong and firm. Um, start, start a little 30 day squat challenge. Grab a, grab a, grab a kettlebell if you want to, or hold on to your coffee table or something. And I bet the first thing that will, and try to stay down in the squat for 30 minutes cumulatively. Okay. Me and my, me and Dr. Ask. Even 10. Well, yeah. And so this is what I'm saying. Cumulatively, as you go, you'll probably notice the first or second day, uh, five, 10 minutes in your toes will start to get numb and tingly. You know what I mean? Like because of the blood flow restriction, because we, we don't have that capacity. Um, but then try to build on that. Um, and it's not exciting, but you will build a, an incredible foundation for your squat. It's the Russian way, right? The compounding effect of exercise. Like the, it's not a linear thing, right? Where it's going to be one day, one addition of one, addition of one minute, addition of one minute. Each day is going to get better. You'll notice an exponential curve if you can kind of remain consistent. That's the Russian bet. Is it not? Yes. And I feel like if, if your goal to improve something like the squat is to see a higher number on the plates, you know, that total on your back, yeah. the only positive outcome uh, guaranteed, if that's the case, is that the, that number is higher. Yeah. Right. That's, there, that's it, all you of get. course, strength goes Good up, point. but that doesn't mean the functional capacity outside of that exercise to yeah. apply that force otherwise is, is, is uh, guaranteed. Right. So no, makes like, sense. W- like, w- what do you think of when you think of somebody who can't squat? Like, w- what are the reasons why they can't? And I, and I feel like there's two questions. Like, what is one of the, re- what are the reasons that they can't? Yeah. And what is the sequelae or what are, what are, what are the things that can, that can occur or, or can be not occurring in a person because they don't have that capacity? You know what I mean? So mm. like, we so if you ask the you know the graduating clinician like why can't somebody squat they're going to say well maybe stiff hips yeah. stiff ankles right cla- the classic and that is a sure. big chunk yeah. and you know and if they're if they've been studying extra as they graduate they might give you the rundown of the capsular pattern of the hip and, and you're like okay that's great but there's also like can their posterior ribs pull away from each other yeah. Can their sacrum counter nutate, right? Can their L5, right. S1, L4, L3 pull away from each other? Can their, can their rib cage in the front go down? Mm-hmm. Uh, can, can, can the greater trochanters rotate towards each other as you, as you go down? Can your tibias internally rotate as you go down? Right. Can your guts uh, move and shift in your abdominal cavity. Yeah. You know, can your, can your pelvic floor relax? Like, I think I've hinted, I think I've said this before on the show, like there's, it's, it's not a random occurrence that people that can't, you know, squat below, I mean, way below, you know, nowhere near 90 degrees have probably a higher rate of hemorrhoids and also the amount of time it takes for them to defecate. Right. Like, you know, I used to be able to poop in three minutes when I was 12, but sure. now for some reason it takes me you know, six chapters of the latest, you know, uh, Lee Child novel for me to get this out. And, and uh, that's not random. Yeah. That's not no. just because you're 47. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And chances are there is a link between the fact that you can't internally rotate your femurs. You cannot move your, your pelvis cannot uh, dissociate itself. Uh, your right. lumbar spine cannot go apart your rib cage is not dynamic your upper back can't expand your neck can't curve into its normal lordosis that you you lost 20 years ago church none of these things can occur 
Yeah. So it, it's just like the amount, like for me, the squat 20 years ago or 15 years ago, I, I tell you the squat for me is, you know, because I want to have a new PR. Right. Uh, but it's changed, you know, when I, when, you know, hindsight is always uh, way more than 2020, it's 2010 or whatever, yeah. whatever owls have. And, uh, and Big it's vision, like, bro. Yeah. <laughs> These different layers of the light spectrum. Yeah. And yeah, I wish I, you know, I definitely, my mentality is most of my life has been the Bulgarian system and I, and I really wish it was the, the Russian system. And you know, that really takes, uh, that stuff is ta taught. It's, it's not automatic. Yeah. Right. So what I mean by like, why does every wealthy family, how come all the children of wealthy families just become wealthy? How come they live longer and they're typically not as obese? Right. Well, it's because wealthy families hand that stuff down to their kids. They like give them the information. Right. You know, unhealthy families it's never told you that Twinkies aren't great for breakfast, but wealthy families will tell you that that's not a good idea because right. you're not going to get as much stuff down and you can't read enough BJ Fogg books. Uh, and, and, and on and on and on. Yeah, and, true. And so what I mean is if you're not taught this mentality, which I don't think I was, it, it's hard yeah. to learn it with this Russian mentality. This, the this Russian mentality, yeah. Yeah, this idea of, you know, you, you become a world champion in, in 20 years just by methodical preparation day by day, not by burning the candle from both ends. The Russian way is this, actually, as you're saying, it is the same way as the rich, the rich way. The rich people know that uh, paper is poverty, cash is trash. They know that cash is a melting ice cube. And the best way that they can save their wealth is to put it and hide it in assets, right? Yeah, what is a million, the millionaire next door, right? The whole right. book is about like, yep. wealth, wealthy people are the ones that don't look like they're wealthy. Right. Because they're not spending all their money. <laughs> right. They, but, and they know that their time and their effort, their, their, their money is better served off in the future, it's that laissez-faire, the scarcity, providing some scarcity in the now is, is fullness in the future. That's too, that sounds too scriptural, but you know what I mean? Scarcity now brings abundance in it. I think it would be yeah. closer. So it's the same way in terms of your exercising. You're, per, you're, you're inducing some scarcity into your own system for some future gain. There's nobody, everybody wants to go do a glute workout and then have their peach blow up. You know what I mean? Every guy wants to do a bunch, a hundred, a hundred bicep curls and then look like uh, Schwarzenegger in the seventies. But like, and yeah, your muscles do feel more full of blood after you work out. And so it's a little bit deceptive, but that's like the smallest thing that happened in the moment where the long-term kind of exponential, I was texting, I was like, we need to think like Elon Musk, exponential thinking, like, he talks about it on every podcast he's ever been in. He's like, the problem is your linearity of thought. And linearity of thought is the same thing as like saying, I do a keto diet and binary linearly thinking any other diet that's not keto is a bad diet. That's the pervasive thinking is non-exponential. You know what I mean? Keto pieces of it can be work for you. It's not just the black and white system. Same thing with the squat. I mean, I think there are some truths that we have figured out along the way that you you can learn success leaves clues right that's what our society is built on and so i think there are some of these baselines that we can go back to and then build on them yourself um mm -hmm. but if you feel like you're going forward and hitting a, a wall um maybe back up get a little get a little space and see if your goal is like for the end of this week or your goal is for in the end of five years maybe it's just because i'm in my mid-30s now i'm like time is changing I, my perspective on time is changing and i'm like i would rather spend six months working on this hip extension exercise and have that you know be a lasting effect on my body versus you know just doing it once because i saw it on instagram and then forgetting it next week like of course doing the wall stretch did nothing if you did it for three days and then gave yeah. up on it stick with it guys yeah I'm, I'm afraid that this conversation is kind of fruitless though because it's in the sense that you know in retrospect we see everything right like yeah once you lose your parents like you wish you would have called them more like sure. uh, we know this we know this now and we still don't do anything about it. Yeah. Like we know that uh, we're getting stiffer and we have these issues, but we don't do anything about it right. until we have enough trauma that we change ourselves, right? 
Yeah. So this is what I go back to the, to the, to the whole point of if, if you're a clinician or a coach or a trainer or a physio, yeah. whatever you are, like, you know, you have the opportunity to kind of be that guide. Now, some people just won't open their ear to you except for like, fix me, uh, fast. So I can get back right. to, to, to ultra marathons. Right. Yeah, but sure. there's going to be a percentage that you're, that are going to like hear what you say when yeah. you kind of say like, listen, you don't squat to get better at the exercise squat. Like you're a runner. I need you to squat so that you can continue to run ultra marathons yeah. and also so that you can poop and also so that childbirth is easier and also and on and on and on and on and on. Right. Yeah, so you don't ribs, have these breathing, injuries. Yeah. yeah. God, you yeah. breathe better. You don't snore at night. You don't have apnea. Like I would go on and on and on. Yeah. Uh, but, and I think that's the takeaway. I think for me, there's two takeaways, which is like, you know, I would like to someday, you know, the, the impact that I could make on somebody's life is to help direct them where I didn't have that direction, for example, for sure. And, and, and it could be in my son, or it could be in any patient that comes in or any friend of mine where I can just say, like, hey, just, you know, if you can connect enough to them, they will give you that credit that they don't know that lesson yet. But this is this is this is the smart part, right? Like you don't mm. have to go through all these things yourself. You can just read a bunch of books about other people that went through all yeah, these things. Absolutely. Right. So read those books. Yeah. But also you have a chance to be that person that says, Hey, like, I don't want you I, I'm gonna improve your squat. I don't care about you putting weight on your back. I want you right. to squat so that everything else in life is better. Right. And and I think yeah. that's what I think about. And we could have a whole different podcast on yeah, the exercise, the squat, right? For and sure. I think we've we've had one before. But uh, I think for me, this was more important this time to, to I talk agree. about this stuff. 100%. I agree. I think that's a great place to stop. Uh, baby Soren is going to wake up. Those volcanoes are going to keep erupting. Uh, if you guys haven't already, smash that like button. Leave a comment below. Tell us what you think. Do you think I'm wrong? Do you think Bobby's wrong? Uh, if you haven't reviewed us, leave it on the, re leave it on the reviews. Uh, we appreciate all of it. Peace. Thanks.